Welcome to the COP26 Nature Newsroom here in Glasgow. We have two special guests with us today. Hita, um, Hita Lakani, you are from India and yes. you are a Real Food Systems Ambassador. And we also have here Martin Frick, who has been preparing the UN Food Systems Summit and now uh, working for the World Food Program in Germany. So welcome. Um, first question, uh, Hita, what is good food for you? What, it means, what does it mean to have good food on your plate? I think good food is uh, lots of different things. For me, it, it depends on what the food is exactly is. Is, is the nutrition, what is the nutritional value? How does it, also how does it look? How does it taste? How does it smell? Good food is a, a lot about appearance, but it's also about what actually is going in your body and how much it is contributing to your health or mishealth in that sense. And you, Martin, what is good food for you, having good food on your plate? Well, we haven't rehearsed it, but I can only <laughs> compliment what he has said and said, and good food is what is good for our planet. Good food builds up nature capital and is not yeah. depleting it. Okay, and Hita, um, today is actually the day focusing on cities and regions. How do you see the role of local actors, cities and regions to transform these food systems and make them more healthy for people and the planet? Yeah, cities, of course, especially in my country, India, we're biggest consumers. And across the world, cities are the biggest consumers, whether it's food, whether it's energy, whatever that might be. And I think to make a transformation in the food systems, it really has to also be bottom up. It ho of course, we need top down policy level action, but we also need to see individuals, you know, as simple as having windowsill gardening. I come from a city in Bombay called Mumbai, which is basically really, really crowded. People don't have balconies, people don't have gardens, but we do all have windowsills. And to have windowsill gardening, whether you can grow your own chilies, your own tomatoes, your own little you know, herbs that you need for the, for the house, automatically helps in one, ensuring that you know where your food is coming from. It helps you be a little more responsible. It also helps you connect back with nature as you look after your plant, you look after what, it, what is happening. If you have kids in the house, it, it's also good for the kids to you know, take responsibilities, you know, learn life skills. And all of that put together, at the end of the day, it brings together a nature-positive attitude where you really care about the nature around you, you care about the little plants, you care about the food and the fresh food that you're eating every single day. And for you, Martin, how do you see the role of cities and regions in this transformation? Twofold. I, in all of the environmental world, we have been focusing on landscape approaches. And I think if you look at cities and regions, I want to introduce the term of foodscapes, because they're interdependent systems. Um, where it matters where the food is coming from and how it's being distributed. But also the political point that in the last very difficult years for climate, cities and regions have been the true engine of climate action. We had at COP23 in Bonn, um, a big city summit, and that helped driving ambition even at times when the political climate was super difficult. And you can rely on cities they will continue driving a progressive nature and environmental friendly agenda. Thank you, Martin. And you have also been leading on the climate negotiations for many years. Uh, what would be your message to the leaders who are here in Glasgow? Uh, they're working around the clock now to finalize the COP decision. What would you tell them? <laughs> to look into food systems, because food systems is the biggest single contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. And at the same time, our very best chance, not only to get the climate crisis under control, but also the biodiversity crisis, and most importantly, fighting poverty and hunger in tandem. And you, Hita, you're one of these very brave youth leaders who made it all the way to Glasgow. What do you want to tell them, the leaders who are here negotiating the final text? I think my biggest message would be just to really think about the actions that they're doing think holistically and not just as negotiators talking about the little text. Take a back seat and just look at the big picture and see what role they're really playing in carving the history for the next few years, for the next few decades. Are they leaving behind a legacy for future generations? And if yes, what kind of legacy? It is a positive legacy or is it a legacy that people look back and say, you know, we had the chance to make a change, but we didn't do it right. So just look at the big picture, look at the different contributors. Yes, energy is a big factor. Yes, we need finance, but also there are a lot of missing pieces and like Martin suggested, you know, look at the food systems and 
actually put these things together and make the right decisions when they come together. And do you think COP26 can be a milestone for a nature positive future? Do you see nature being at the heart of the decisions here? I think I do. I think I do. A lot of people are now talking about nature-based solutions. They're talking about the role of food systems. They're really putting pieces together. We're still not 100% there yet, and the negotiations still need to incorporate all of this. But there is a lot more conversations, even including between the youth constituency of the climate space at Siango and the youth constituency of the biodiversity space. We have a lot more interaction and learnings together. And you, Martin, do you think nature will be in the final package of the Glasgow decisions? Oh, it absolutely has to. And just one word to nature-based solution. If you look around, if you look at yourself, you are a nature-based solution. The centrality of that needs to be understood. And in order to get nature-based solution right and working for people, again, the central connecting point is food. This is our biggest interface between people and nature. And we need to harness it because otherwise we don't stay any chance to stay below 1.5. Yeah. So my hope is that COP27 would really have a dedicated food system stay to hammer this point home. Many thanks to both of you for joining this inter intergenerational dialogue and have a nice day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Elise.